I'm getting a question as to whether you can catch COVID a second time after recovering from the initial infection. This is a really big question, and it largely depends on what time course you're talking about. So early studies in monkeys, which share a similar immune system to us and do launch a similar immune response to the virus and develop similar symptoms to COVID-19, initial exposure to the virus does prompt the monkey immune system to build specific antibodies. And then if immediately re-exposed to the virus after recovery, and by immediately, I mean immediately, so these monkeys just stopped having symptoms and then were reintroduced to the virus, it appears that they don't contract the infection a second time. Again, this was in an animal study. We're learning more about what that looks like in humans. There were early reports and anecdotal cases of quote unquote reinfection among people. There were a number of reports from China and South Korea, namely. More recent data suggests that rather than becoming reinfected with the virus, rather these people were shedding dead bits of the virus after having recovered. So the virus can remain detectable in the body for weeks after infection. Um, that's something we see with other viruses as well, other infections. And that's held true for COVID-19. What was happening was these people were testing positive, so they had the virus and they were visibly sick, tested negative, and then tested positive again. So at first, some concluded that it is a potential case of reinfection when they saw that pattern, but it could be that the virus is simply circulating in the body for a longer period of time, but isn't actually viable at that point of the infection. Viable means it can replicate, it can infect cells actively. If it's no longer viable, it's not infecting cells and it's not replicating anymore. So these are all questions. There's a larger question, which is important to vaccine development as to how long immunity lasts if it does, if your body does mount an adequate immune response in the first place. This might be partially dose dependent. So if you're exposed to only a teeny, teeny bit of the virus, we see this with the flu as well, you might not generate a strong enough antibody response for that to translate into lasting immunity. It could be that you just launch kind of a general non-specific immune response. And this is enough to clear those, that small amount of virus that's in your body. However, if you're exposed to a larger dose, that's when the antibody response would be prompted. So that's one question is how reliant it is is it on how large your dose was in the first place? Which is why we give different doses of vaccines to see if there's a difference in the immune response. Additionally, with these seasonal coronaviruses that I mentioned, there's four that cause the common cold. These four viruses do not mutate quickly through time. They do not mutate enough to the point that we would think the body wouldn't recognize them upon second, third, fourth exposure. But we see these common cold coronaviruses reinfect people year after year. They're seasonal. So there's a question as to what's happening either at the level of the virus or the level of the immune system to change how the body recognizes that virus. So if you have antibodies circulating, Theoretically, you should, that should grant you some immunity, but there might be something happening with these seasonal coronaviruses that makes it so the body, quote unquote, forgets that it's met that virus before. We don't know if a similar trend could be seen in this SARS-CoV-2 virus, but early tests in the related SARS-CoV virus suggest that there was also a drop off in immunity through time, perhaps on the scale of one to two years, which isn't totally unexpected. Um, but we won't know about that trend in terms of this new virus until we are able to observe more people who have recovered. Um, so that's a huge question and it remains to be seen how that plays out.